we arrived to the last kind of neural network that we will uh, study, the so-called recurrent neural networks. These are used to learn sequences of data, but what is the characteristic of a sequence? Well, in a sequence, the problem is that each element may depend not only on its own feature of, uh, or relative to that element, but it may also depend on the features at uh, times uh, t minus one or t minus two on the previous feature or on the previous, on the lagged values of the sequence itself. And uh, here we use time for simplicity, but a sequence more, more in general can be defined on any dimension. So, of course, we could always consider lagged feature or uh, lagged uh, value of the sequence as further dimensions, uh, and with this use standard uh, feedforward network that we, we already saw. For example, we could consider values at time t minus one, at time t minus one, at time uh, t minus three, and so on. However, if we do that, we'll do some sort again of manual feature engineering. It's very similar to the way we did uh, introduce nonlinear feature transformations and use the linear classifier with, with, uh, with these, uh, uh, under these uh, uh, transformed uh, features. But we don't want to do this. We want to be the algorithm to learn this future transformation. We want the, the model to learn how much of this history uh, is important to retain, to predict the next element of the sequence and which, uh, instead, which, uh, uh, which elements maybe have a, a local importance, but they, they don't longer influence the, uh, the sequence after some, some time steps. So this is why we are using uh, uh, some uh, uh, specialized uh, um, kind of neural networks that take the name of a recurrent neural network. There are a few differences in this kind of architecture compared with what we, we saw earlier. The most important one is that the input here doesn't arrive only at the beginning of the chain, like in a feedforward neural network, but at each layer, it will arrive uh, an element of the sequence. And uh, uh, each uh, uh, layer of this recursive neural network, so process uh, two things. The previous, uh, the, the input coming from the previous layers, but here we call the state, that is somehow similar to what we saw early in feedforward neural network, together with the input corresponding to its specific layer, the, the element, the end element of, of the sequence. And the, for both of these input, the pro, uh, the computations will be made using some parameters that we want to learn. And uh, this parameters, these weights, are shared for the various uh, layers of the RNN across the sequence. So we can interpret this in, uh, in two different ways. Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, we have uh, one single uh, RNN layer and this is called itself recursively uh, and with uh, any with the different element of the sequence, or we can think that at each element we have a different uh, uh, a different layers, but with shared weights. So this is somehow um, an alternative, two alternative uh, interpretations of of the same fact. Also, note uh, somehow the similarities with convolutional networks. In convolutional networks, we had. Uh, a filter that convolve across the image, but keeping learning some some weights. So doing these convolutions, the weights remain constants. Here we have a recursive, uh, uh, a recurrent uh, um, layer, but again somehow filter the whole uh, uh, sequence, and by doing that, it learns some shared parameter. So there are some similarities between uh, uh, recurrent neural networks and convolutional neural networks. So 
we can again in try to implement a basic uh, RNN layer, at least the forward passage of, of, of it. So we will uh, adapt the code uh, that we wrote uh, uh, earlier. So we create our structure RNN layer, and here instead of having only the bias with respect, uh, so the weight with respect to the bias, and the uh, weight with respect to the previous uh, uh, layer, so in this case to, to the state, we have also another matrix of weights with respect to the input. Again, as we are modeling here the whole layer and not a single neuron, so for example, the basis uh, is a vector. So we establish the number of uh, inputs and number the output, and uh, we establish here uh, an, uh, very often uh, RNN uh, layers have a ReLU as a, as a activation function. So the, uh, here we write the the we instantiate one uh, one object of the class uh, uh, RNN layer, and the forward passage will be very similar to what we uh, already did uh, in uh, using a normal feedforward neural network, where we have uh, the activation functions that is broadcasted over the dot product of the weight of uh, the bias, the weight with respect to the input that multiply the input, plus the weight of the states that multiply the, the state. And if you run this code here, what is interesting here is that the, even if you keep constant the x and you run several passages of this recursive neural network with, uh, the, uh, with, diff with the same x, you will see that the state Will, will change even if the x uh, remain constant because the state is constantly updated with the new informations that the new element, the new x, uh, even if the x is constant, will, will bring. So this is the simple uh, possible implementation of a recursive neural network. Uh, and uh, here we keep explicitly the state uh, uh, the state uh, um, as an element outside of the of the structure what happens in uh, in uh, so we need to call forward with both the x and the state what most uh, um, most uh, um, uh, libraries of uh, uh, neural networks will include the state as here as an element of the of the structure so when you have to do to call forward you don't need to include the states because the state is somehow included in the object defining the layer rnn can be used to perform different kind of task with uh, uh, respect to sequences for example they can be used to characterize a, a, a sequence. Uh, that is it, uh, to extract some information out of, uh, uh, of this, uh, uh, some property of this sequence. For example, in sentiment analysis, we want to predict uh, some text, so we have uh, as input some uh, uh, text uh, uh, written in a natural uh, uh, language, and uh, we want to analyze the meaning of that text in in sense uh, in the sense uh, if it is uh, a, a positive or a negative feedback for uh, for a product, for example. You you will understand that here we cannot long we cannot look at each individual word one by one because for example if i say uh, i like or if i say i don't like the fact that don't is just before like change completely the meaning so we want to learn this as a sequence and not as a uh, uh, as uh, the um, as some property of the elements taken one by one. Uh, another example is uh, again, if we have a language to to explore, uh, uh, to to predict in which language is the text is written. In all these cases, we have 
a sequence and we are interested in some, some property. So we start, uh, we, we will have two parts of the, of the, of the, of the neural network. The first part will objective will be to mm, create a sort of a vector of uh, um, interpretation of this uh, uh, this sequence so we will encode the sequence in a vector uh, format the final states and uh, this vector will then be fed to another part of the uh, neural network, typically a, a classical feed-forward neural networks, we was task is to decode these states to form the kind of label that we are interested. At this point, we will compare the prediction with the actual uh, uh, actual value that uh, we have and will determine a loss, uh, uh, a loss functions. So we start with some state, we typically a vector of, of zero, and then at each element of the sequence, we run the uh, forward passage of the uh, re recurrent neural networks so that the change the, the state will 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 change and uh, we do that for the first element for the second element for the third element and so on and notice here that the weights here remain constant and these weights are those that we want to to learn that are responsible to encode the state of the the sequence to a final state and uh, when we uh, have the the loss functions we train the the network by con by computing the same way as we did earlier for the feed forward neural networks the contributions of all these weights to the loss functions and we try to minimize the the the, the loss so when we try when we train the the network uh, we give them several sequences and uh, what is important is that we at each uh, sequence that we train uh, the network we reset the state so we do not reset of course the weights these are shared within uh, uh, they are shared across the different uh, different training example that we we give uh, to the network this is what we want to to learn but the states will change at each new sequence that we train the network with. While here we are interested only on the final uh, uh, state of the sequence to extract some characteristic of the whole sequence, sometimes we are interested instead to each individual element of the, of the sequence. So we want somehow to, to replicate uh, some pattern like uh, to predict which is the next word when we type some text in our mobile or which is the next uh, note in some uh, some music or which is the next uh, uh, price in the in the market so in all these cases our interest is not only the final states but is the state uh, at each uh, at each step of the sequence and uh, this is somehow similar to what we saw earlier. The difference is that the, in the decoding part doesn't happen only at the, at the end, but at each time we have a new element of the sequence here, here, and here, we produce some state that represent the current state of the, of the sequence. And that this state is uh, decoded to produce an estimation of uh, of some uh, of some value that we are interested it could be the next element of the sequence could be whatever and uh, then we compare this with the true label that we have for uh, that element of the sequence and then we take the loss with respect to all these elements and we do exactly like earlier we try to uh, find uh, the contribution of the weights with respect to this overall uh, loss
a final uh, remark. While in theory uh, recurrent neural networks can learn this importance of uh, the features uh, uh, independently on where they are in the sequence so that they can learn that for example this element is very important even many steps away in the sequence in practice uh, the way that we do the training is to compute the the gradient uh, uh, to compute the the importance of, of the weights for the uh, loss functions and that is to compute the gradients and again we are going to use the chain rules but you realize that when the sequence is very long for a recurrent uh, uh, neural network uh, the problem of vanishing gradients will be even more strong because this uh, to compute the 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 importance of the, the weight here at this point with the first element this we need to multiply several times due to the to the chain rule to arrive to the to the loss function so I while in practice they in theory they could do it in practice they have the problem that they cannot learn much the contribution of a uh, uh, element far away from uh, uh, from uh, the the sequence so a, contri a contribution has been proposed where this architecture has been improved by using some sort of gates that using again some parameters that we want we will be learned by the algorithm these gate systems learn what to store in the in the memory what is important even for, uh, ele for to predict elements that are far away in the in the sequence and which one instead maybe have an importance locally but after some steps they can be forgiven because they no longer bring any any contribution and uh, in particular one uh, kind of gated networks that is uh, in uh, use uh, at time of, uh, of speaking are the long short term memory but they are more complex because they have several gates they have also several states for lstm hidden and visible states in particular but we don't need to worry much about them because at the end the way they are used is operate in operations is exactly the same way that we described here